Good morning and welcome to the Thornton Academy, Thornton Academy Atrium for a very special presentation on Thornton Academy TV. I'm Jeff Christian along with Cole Purvis. We'll have Zach Taranko here with us as well. It's a very special day here as four of our athletes will be signing letters of commitment to play athletics at the Division I level in college. We're going to try to get two quick interviews before the ceremony, then we'll have the ceremony and grab the other two after. We're now joined by Cody Ruff who is assigning to Stonehill College to play football. So Cody, first let's talk about what was the process like uh, going through and looking at different colleges? So basically, I wanted to start looking for colleges that would fit my academic needs. First off, what schools are great business programs? That's what I wanted to study. So I started there. I looked at what interest that just kind of led me to my decision. Your senior year in football obviously went very well. So how did you how good did it feel to cap it off with a state championship? I couldn't have asked for anything better. That was the best way to end it. End my career here with a state championship and a ring on the finger. It's nothing better. And how is, oh. how's your football career at TA helped you? Uh, when you prepare for the next level? In so many ways. With our work ethic here, double sessions, knowing that we have to put in the work in the off season is a huge thing in football because the off season is year round. So just getting that little like preview gets you ready for even bigger and better things in college. Now talk about Stonehill a little bit as a football program and it's not you know not as well known as some of the bigger programs we've heard, but I mean D1 I mean they had the, the ability to do it and I think it's a great thing, honestly. I'm excited to be a part of the program and the change. What are you most excited about for playing football at Stonehill? Meeting the new people, being making friends, like lifelong friends in college that are going to be a part of my life forever, networking and making those memories that you have, like going out to eat with a bunch of the guys or meeting after a practice or a film session to hang out and talk. What does it mean today to, to have, you know, there's four of you up there and including one of your teammates, Jack Emerson. What is it like kind of going through this process with some of these great athletes that we have at TA? It's really a very rare thing for us to have four Division One athletes in one class. It's memorable because it's something you can share with your friends. You can look back on and you can talk about and third years on the line and say, do you remember this day when we all got together and had this meeting and this ceremony? It was something to look back on and memories to make and something I'll always remember. Awesome. All right, as we wrap up here, Cody, any, any last thoughts? I mean, are you nervous up there? You got a lot of friends and family here. What, what is, what do you, what's it feeling like today? I think you'd be crazy if you weren't nervous, but I'm excited. That's for sure. I'm excited to be here, excited to be part of it and have things going. Awesome. Well, congratulations, and we'll see you up there just in a few minutes. All right, All right thank we'll, you. We'll take a quick break here, and we'll come back with Jack Emerson here on Thorn Academy TV. We'll just start off saying, like, uh, your process, looking for football, you know, obviously coming into this last season, a lot of hype around you, and you guys, your whole team delivered, obviously, with a state championship. When you were looking for a type of college and a program, what were you looking for? I was looking for a Division One mostly, somewhere where I could work to play and um, – you know, just like that family bond, and I found you, Maine, was like the best for me. Awesome. Well, what is one of your hopes or goals for your career at, uh, at UMaine? Um, at some point, I want to start, yep. be the starting quarterback there. That's mainly my mo main goal right now. What were some of the things about the, the campus and, and beyond the football field, obviously, that kind of drew you to, to UMaine? Um, I like it because it's in my home, home state, obviously, and um, it's not too far, but it's also not too close. So um, I feel like it's a perfect in-between. So, you know, I thought it was pretty good. I like playing in Maine, so. What is, um, we've seen a lot of these athletes play before. Um, we've live streamed a lot of their ma games and matches. Mm -hmm. What is it about these four players that really stand out? I mean, any year these would have been like the premier athletes. We just happen to have four of them this year here at TA. Well, I think we've talked about it before is that this whole, the whole COVID ha thing happened and we didn't get to have all these events and all these people here. And so to have not only four fantastic athletes, but to have this big event, you know, they're all being able to, to celebrate this moment with, with their friends and their families and their teammates. And, um, you know, each individual athlete has their own accolades. You know, they both, you know, Jack, and, and uh, Cody Ruff, they both won a state championship. Cody Bowker's won a perfect game, and he's, he's won a lot uh, for baseball. And obviously, Mia Clark, he's just won the 800 and won at New England's too. So uh, they're all great athletes, and it's all a special moment for them, but also for TA to have four athletes, four great athletes, and in a year like this where we're starting to you know, find a lot of the students who are excelling in their sports. All right, and so for Cole, I mean, you play tennis here at Thorne Academy. Um, Talk about the difficulty that it takes to be a college level athlete. And you're playing with some some guys, uh, some international guys, and, and other guys that that are probably going to play at the next level, maybe the D2, D3 level. That D1 level, it's so incredibly yeah. difficult. What do you think it takes on a day to day basis for these athletes to to kind of achieve that and get that opportunity? To well, play I think at the next a lot level? of these athletes will talk about the work ethic that they've had to put in, and for TA to pr produce four of these incredible athletes that are playing at a high level just speaks to how good the school's athletic program has been. And um, all four of these athletes have worked day in and day out to, you know, perfect their craft. And it's a variety of sports, too. We have track, football, baseball. Uh, so you're seeing a lot of different sports really excel. And um, 
at TA there's a lot of great athletes and these uh, people can get pushed by their teammates and everything which makes them better uh, so they'll be very well prepared for the next level when they go to college. Awesome. Well, now we're going to go take a look at the ceremony uh, for these four athletes, and we'll come back. We'll have interviews with Mia Claire Kiesel and Cody Bowker. So enjoy the ceremony here for our four athletes. I'm going to name our honorees, and if they can uh, stand or, or raise their hands so we can know where they are. Our honorees this morning are Cody Bowker. <laughs> Cody will play baseball at Georgetown University. He'll be a Hoya in the Big East Conference. Second is Jack Emerson. Jack will represent our state university, the University of Maine, playing football in the Colonial Athletic Association. Mia Claire Kiesel. Mia Claire will compete in cross country and track and field at the United States Naval Academy of the Patriot League. Cody Ruff. <laughs> Cody will play football at Stonehill College, a longtime Northeast 10 school that has just joined the ranks of NCAA Division I schools. Please join me collectively again in congratulating them for having reached these very important decisions in their lives for having been selected by these collegiate institutions to join the ranks of student athletes. Congratulations to all of you. You're going to hear a little bit about them this morning and then you're going to hear a little bit from them prior to their signing their national letters of intent. These students make up one of the select groups of student athletes to compete in our athletic program. Cody Bowker has been an integral part of the baseball program since his freshman year and is a two-time all-conference selection. He was the SMAA Player of the Year last year and was the Telegram League batting champion, only the 10th Thornton Academy player to do so since we joined the Telegram League in 1919. One of the state's top pitchers, he actually accomplished the rare feat of hurling a perfect game on April 28th at Goodall Park. Jack Emerson, Cody's teammate, helped quarterback Thornton Academy to the Class A state championship in football during his senior season. Jack's journey to this stage was unique, and as junior season was limited to participating in seven-on-seven -seven workouts. Nevertheless, he persevered, worked hard on his own, and earned both Class A football coaches and Maine Sunday Telegram All-State recognition for his efforts. Mia Claire Kiesel is one of the state's elite distance runners, and is a three-time conference, three-time state, and one-time New England champion. Mia Claire won the 800-meter run at the state outdoor meet in Lewiston as a freshman, and won two indoor titles at the University of Southern Maine this past February. She was a Maine track and cross country coach's first team all state performer in 2019. Like Jack, Cody Ruff was also selected to the Maine Sunny Telegram all state team for the sport of football. Cody excelled on the defensive side of the ball as one of the finest pass rushers in the history of the Thornton Academy football program. Simply stated, he owned the edge. Cody is also a three sport athlete who helped both his boys basketball and lacrosse teams achieve team success. This moment represents an important milestone in the athletic and academic careers of Cody, Jack, Mia Claire, and Cody. This morning we will continue a tradition that began in 2013, when right in this very room we, we recognized Jeff Gerlinus, who went on to the University of Maine to play baseball, and we've been doing it ever since of recognizing outstanding student athletes at, at Thornton Academy whose aspirations and achievements result in them going on to play collegiate athletics at the Division I or Division II level. The purpose of today's gathering is for the families, close friends, coaches, and others who've had a positive impact upon the development of these young uh, men and women to celebrate their accomplishments. Today, Cody, Jack, Mia Claire, and Cody will each be signing an NCAA National Letter of Intent and join the ranks of a select group of current and former Thornton Academy student athletes to achieve this significant milestone. We know that their experiences here at Thornton Academy have prepared them well and wish them the best in their academic and athletic experiences at the next level. At this time, as we traditionally do, we will invite each of their high school coaches to come forward to share their personal reflections upon their careers. First, I'd like to introduce uh, Cody Bowker's head coach in the sport of baseball at Thornton Academy, Mr. Jason LaRivier. Yeah. 
Thank you, Mr. Stevens, and thank you, uh, Thornton Academy, for putting this on. It's great to be back to normal a little bit, so I'm honored to be able to speak on behalf of someone that I've known since he was 11 years old. Uh, I can remember the camp down in Westbrook when I first saw him playing, and um, once in a great while, you meet a young kid that you know is destined for great things. The way he carried himself, the way he spoke to and about his friends, the way he carried himself on the field, I could tell that he was gonna be special. Fast forward to high school when he was a freshman and made our varsity baseball team. I remember all of the players welcome, welcoming him with open arms. Cody wasn't your typical freshman. He expected greatness out of himself and others around him. The 2019 upperclassmen quickly knew that we had a very talented athlete in Cody but also knew that we had an even better young man. They welcomed him and cared about him. They made him feel like part of the team from the very first practice he participated in. He was so impressive, not just from a baseball skill perspective, but from a leadership perspective, that the 2019 team captains nominated Cody to be the following year's captain as just a sophomore. While one may say that Cody has been our, our leader since his sophomore year, I would say Cody has been a leader since the moment, moment he stepped on campus. He leads by example in the classroom, as a baseball player, and as a mentor to everyone around him. I am a better coach because of him. His teammates are better baseball players because of him. And anyone who gets the chance to, to be with him and just talk are a better person because of him. He is the epitome of a great human being. And I haven't even mentioned the great family and support system he has around him. So I'd like to congratulate Cody, his parents, Patricia, and Mark, his brother, Jesse, for allowing us to be a part of Cody's journey. Congratulations on signing your national letter of intent to Georgetown University. We cannot wait to follow your journey. Thank you, Coach Luvrier, for those words. Next, we'd like to invite to the podium the head coach of Thornton Academy girls indoor and outdoor track and field, and a former uh, team state champion herself here at this school, uh, Mrs. Amanda Tripp. Thank you. All right, I first had the pleasure of coaching Mia Claire Kiesel during her eighth grade year here at Thornton Academy Middle School. At this level, she was already becoming one of the best distance runners this school has seen. And by witnessing her work ethic, I knew this girl was going places. Fortunately, I am able to coach Mia Claire in her final year at Thornton Academy, where I continued to be awed by her performances. She makes running incredibly tough times look so easy. Here are some of her many accomplishments. Her indoor school records include the 600 yard run, the 800 meters, the 1,000 meters, the mile, the two mile, the four by 800 meter relay, and the four by 400 meter relay. She holds the main state record for the 1,000 meters indoors. She is a two-time state champion and also a New England champion. She was voted by all coaches in the league during the indoor season as the most outstanding distance runner. Her outdoor school records include the 800 meters in this event where she was the state champion as a freshman the 1600 meters, the mile, and the 3200 meters. She is fourth all time in the state of Maine in the 800 meter run. This season, two of her goals were to run a sub five minute mile and to break the two mile school record. She accomplished both of those goals with grit and determination. As you can tell from the long list of amazing accolades, Mia Claire is an incredible athlete, but even more important, she is a kind, intelligent, inclusive, and thoughtful human being. Her work ethic and dedication are second to none. She puts in the time, following rigorous running plans and workouts every week. She runs early in the morning if she has other commitments in the afternoon, and she is out in all weather conditions, and will happily always do more with a smile on her face. She has been a captain for both indoor and outdoor track during her junior and senior years. Mia Claire is a wonderful teammate and role model to her peers, always encouraging and cheering them on. She is a dream athlete for any coach. Her shoes will be very tough to fill. After gra graduation, she will surely be missed. We wish Mia Claire continued success in college and beyond. Go Navy, be Army.
Thank you very much, Mrs. Tripp. And our final coach who will present today uh, is actually uh, a very proud dad at this moment as well, but he has some coaching responsibilities that we'll take care of right now. Uh, the head coach of the Thornton Academy uh, football program, Mr. Kevin Kiesel. Thank you, Ms. Stevens. Uh, I certainly want to start off by thanking everyone that came out today uh, to show this sport for all four of these student athletes. Um, it's nice to be able to do this again. Uh, certainly congratulations to Cody Balker on his decision to attend Georgetown University. Certainly wish you the rest of, best of luck to remain this spring too. Um, it's a special day when in addition to celebrate two exceptional players as a coach, you get to accept, ex ex celebrate the accomplishments of a, as a parent. Me and Claire, uh, Amanda, Brady and I and the rest of our family are so proud of your accomplishments here at TA and what the future holds for you. I'm going to start with Jack. Um, over the past four years, Jack has played a lot of football for us at a very high level. With Jack on the field, our coaching staff and his teammates always felt like we, our chances of winning were very good. Jack did a great job leading our team. Off the field, Jack is a laid back, happy guy. On the field, he plays with great energy and passion. The mature leadership he has shown for us on the field is truly phenomenal. Jack is another one of our players that is a student of the game. During my 30 years of coaching, Jack is one of the most dedicated athletes I've ever had the opportunity to work with. As Mr. Stevens alluded to earlier, he worked tirelessly to become a better quarterback and an athlete. Last year during the COVID pandemic, when the fall sports season was canceled in Maine, Jack traveled all over the country to work on his quarterbacking skills. He also worked extremely hard in the weight room to improve his strength, speed, and flexibility, and turned himself into one of the best dual threat quarterbacks we have had here at Thornton Academy. Jack had the ability to make all the throws. It was an equally adept downhill runner. This past season, Jack accounted for over 2,000 yards of total offense and 27 touchdowns. These are great stats considering he only played in half our football games in, in several of our games. Jack's had some phenomenal games for us. As a player here in our program, you are judged by how you play against our best opponents. In our five games against Oxford Hills, Bon Eagle, and Scarborough, Jack averaged over 200 yards of total offense and accounted for 11 touchdowns. For his efforts this year, Jack was named an SMAA All-Conference quarterback, Pull and Press Herald Class of the State team, and a semifinals for the Fitzpatrick Trophy. I could go on and on about Jack, but the bottom line is, is he a, he's a great athlete who just wants to win every time he is put into a competitive situation. We here at Thornton Academy, his parents Steve and Margo, his brother Steve, and the rest of his family are so proud of Jack and his accomplishments. Jack Emerson. Next is Cody Ruff. Cody's the youngest of three siblings. It has been an absolute pleasure coaching all three. I remember when Stanley and Katie seeing me when Cody was young and telling me that Cody was going to be bigger and just as good as DeMel and Greg, his, old, his two older brothers. I had some doubts. The only reason being is that DeMel and Greg were two of the best players to ever play for us. Cody battled through some injuries his sophomore year, early in the season, but by the playoffs, he was our starting defensive end. I remember after the state game loss, how devastated Cody was. You expect that from your seniors. You do not expect it from sophomores. Come to find out, Cody had set a goal to get more state championship rings than both of his brothers. Both DeMel and Greg had gotten two, so losing his sophomore year meant he could only tie that goal. With Cody winning a state title this past fall, it means the Ruff family now has five state championship rings to their collection. Cody had a great year for us. Offensively, he was our second tight end and an excellent blocker. He also played exceptionally well on several of our special teams. It is defense, however, where Cody excelled. Cody is one of the best outside linebackers to ever play for us. Because of how disruptive he was in both the run and pass game, teams were forced to either change the schemes or to try to wait, run away from him. Despite opposing teams doing this, Cody still averaged 6.5 tackles per game, had four sacks, two fumble recoveries, one interception, two defensive touchdowns, and also set a team record with 15 pass deflections this past season. For his efforts, he was named a first team Class A All-Conference defensive end, he was named the Portland Press Herald Class of the State. He was a Gaziano Defensive Player of the Year finalist. 
And just this past weekend, he was inducted into the main chapter of the National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete. Academically, Cody carries a 3.99 GPA, was named the SMAA All Academic Team. Cody will be attending Stonehill College in the fall to major in business and to play football for the Skyhawks. Cody's a great role model for all athletes. In an age where it's becoming more about me and selfishness, Cody is an epitome of a team player. He accepted his role, he trusted the coaching staff, and he did whatever he could to help us. Players like Cody are the reason why we've been so successful. That's what makes today so special. You don't need to have the best statistics. You don't need to have your name on TV and newspaper every week. You don't need to make athletics about you. What you do need to know to have is a phenomenal work ethic, a love for the game, and to be your best in the biggest stage. Congratulations to Cody, his mom Katie, his father Stanley, his two older brothers Demel and Greg, and the rest of his family. Congratulations, Cody. Thank you very much, Mr. Kiesel. This time we'd like to uh, have the uh, student athletes who are honoring uh, today uh, introduce themselves to you and talk a little bit about their experiences. First up, I would like to invite uh, Cody Bowker, uh, soon to be uh, a freshman at Georgetown University. Um, so first off, I just want to say thank you um, to like the TA community for kind of um, accepting me with open arms um, since freshman year. Um, I was just, I was nervous coming in, right? I didn't really have any friends, but um, you guys, everybody here um, invited me in, helped me out, helped me feel comfortable. Um, and that's just really, really special to me because um, I was very nervous um, coming into a new school. Um, so thank you for that. I also want to thank my parents. Um, they gave me the opportunity to come down here and challenge myself academically and um, in every sport that I've played. Um, and it was, yeah, very helpful and thank you so much. Um, also, I want to thank Coach Lerier and then I see Coach Plo back there for um, helping me out, helping me compete because um, that's what I love to do and just um, always listening to me and helping me out and um, all that stuff. Um, and then lastly, I just want to thank all my teammates in any sport, soccer, um, basketball, and uh, in baseball. Um, you guys taught me how to compete and I love doing it every day, so um, thank you. Yeah. And next up, I'd like to invite uh, a future freshman at the University of Maine in Orono, Mr. Jack Emerson. Um, I don't really have much to say, but uh, I just want to thank, first off, my family for everything they've done for me. Um, Steven pushed me through the weight room, even though it's not fun sometimes. And then, uh, obviously, the Thornton Academy football coaching staff and... Um, all my friends and uh, Thorn Academy in general. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for everything. And next, we would like to invite to the podium an incoming midshipman or midshipwoman, uh, in this case, Mia Claire Kiesel. As I stand up here today about to sign my national letter of intent, I'm feeling many emotions, but with gratitude being one. I could not be up here today if it wasn't for the support of so many great people in my life. First off, I'd like to thank all of you guys for coming. It means a lot that there's so many people here. And also, Mr. Stevens, thank you for building a great athletic program. From hiring amazing coaches to organizing game schedules, buses, and Twitter posts, you do it all. It has been an honor to wear the moon and gold for so many years. To my current coach, Coach Tripp, I'm so grateful you stepped up to fill Coach Defoe's shoes this year. I'll miss your positivity and inspirational quotes and emojis in all your emails. Thanks for going along with my crazy ideas and making my last season wearing the moon and gold so special. Although I may be signing to run track, I cannot leave out Coach Charlin. Thank you for instilling my love of soccer back into me 
in high school and not letting me, as Coach Morrison calls it, turn to the light side, even though we know it's the dark side. Although I will be turning to the dark side next year, thank you for all the time you spent in developing me from a defender that looked like a deer on ice to at least one that looked like on solid ground. I'll miss watching Sarah Meg you at practice, your high energy, and your 90s playlist. Also, thank you, Coach Defo. I can't thank you for a specific thing you've done for me because you've done way more than any coach should do for an athlete. I would not be the athlete or the person I am without you. From the countless 400s, maxing out at 15, and 200s, maxing out at 25, you had me run, to the ice baths, which are way worse than any workout you've ever given to me, to the brutal, honest conversations, confidence boosters, and in-depth analysis of racing workouts. I can't thank you enough. Thank you for supporting my goals and ideas and reminding me I'm not the only crazy one. Not only have I been fortunate enough to have great athletic coaches, but I've also been lucky to have great strength coaches. Yes, I may not look like it, but I do lift. Thank you, Emily, for making me program since I was in sixth grade. I would not be where I am without your confusing workouts and support. I probably wouldn't have passed the candidate fitness assessment if it wasn't for you. Thank you for helping me find my love of lifting and attempting to make me love pull-ups. I'll miss you next year. Also, thank you, Rick, for helping me to decipher Emily's confusing exercises, motivating me to do my Navy pull-ups every time Emily makes me do them, and making fun of Brady with me. I'll miss our country music Fridays. Now to the parent, people who are lucky enough to be related to me. To my grandparents, thank you for making it to almost every sporting event I've ever competed, even in the painful ones of me playing soccer. From pa cheering me on to that final corner, to grandpa filming all of my sporting events, and Meme and Grammy for the post-race hugs, no matter how I do. The support you guys have given me has been incredible. I'm so extremely grateful that four grandparents who want to be so involved in my life. To my parents, I know everyone says this about their parents, but I truly mean it when I say I would not be standing up here without the support. From introducing me to this weird sport where I run around in circles as fast as I can, to letting me take out my anger and stress on you guys. No matter what happened during my life, I knew I'd be able to come home to a constant in my life. Dad, I can't believe we've gone from fighting with each other during every 5K to you yelling my 100 meter splits in indoor and my 200 meter splits for outdoor. Thank you for driving me to meets all over New England, making me feel like a nerd for always doing homework and for reminding me that I don't have as many state titles as you do. <laughs> Remember, when you go, you gotta go. Thank you, Mom, for reminding me to have fun in everything I do. From planning all of our meals and around my meat so I can have the same pre-meat meal, Thank you for always being there to give me a hug, reminding me to do yoga after Defo kills me, for always deciding to have a conversation with me when I'm trying to do my homework and teaching me that Lambda fixes everything. Thank you for taking me on all my official visits and buying me sweatshirts on anyone. On a side note, anyone want a West Point sweatshirt? Sorry that I'm leaving you with two annoying brothers, two annoying boys, and a fat mean cat next year. I guess I should probably thank Brady as well, even though he doesn't deserve as much praise as everyone else. Thank you for making a competition out of everything with me and reminding me that I'm not the dumb sibling. Anyone ever try to make a crayon into a candle? So I won't be here, for you, so I won't be here to do your homework for you next year. I'll miss, your, I'll miss our car rides to school and your crazy food combinations. Thank you to my family, thank you to my team who feels like a second family for helping to make my final season a memorable one. Thank you for spending the warm up laps with me and pretending to do plank with me. You guys will always hold a special place in my heart. Finally, thank you to Coach Cook and Coach Lunas for giving me the opportunity to run at the D1 level at my dream school. I'm excited to become a midshipman. As my journey comes, as my journey at TA comes to an end, I would like to thank the TA and soccer community for all the support you guys have given me. I could not be where I am without your support. I could continue with many more thank yous and stories, but I'll end it here as I'm sure you all want to go back to class. Thank you, Mia Claire. And our, our final uh, speaker here among the students uh, will be part of the inaugural Division I football team next year at Stonehill in Northeastern Massachusetts, uh, Mr. Cody Ruff. Well, there's no way I can top that, so I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. I just want to start by saying thank you to my family. They're my main source of ins inspiration for all I do in academics and sports. They push me to be the best I can and strive to do great things on and off the field. And secondly, I want to thank my friends because they're the ones who push me in the weight room, push me on the field, and push me to see how far I can take my football career. <laughs> I see you out there. Um, everyone here 
has always been a part of my life. The TA community has been a great source of inspiration and motivation. People at the Blackout game, all of our football events, basketball, and even lacrosse now. You all have supported me throughout my four years here, and I can't thank you enough. So thank you all for coming. <laughs> and I appreciate it very much. <laughs> yeah. Great job, all of you. You know, I think one of the things that each of the four students mentioned uh, during their presentations today uh, was family. And they referenced that the TA community is a family. It really is. It's a unique family. I've been honored to be part of this family for 15 years now and looking forward to returning next year. Uh, uh, but you folks are part of our family here at TA, and we're, we're going to miss you. We're very proud of you. And given that family theme, I think, theme, I think it's only appropriate that as we go to the next and final phase of our program this morning, that we ask family members to come down uh, and stand behind these uh, young men and women uh, as we do the National Letter of Intent signing. So hold off on the signing until we get ready to place, but if we could invite the family members to come down and stand behind your son or daughter. One of the great honors anybody can have, certainly as they go through the journey that these young men and women are going through, is the opportunity to sign National Letter of Intent to attend an NCAA Division I university. Momentarily, we're going to have each of these people sign their letter of intent with a pen that we are providing them as a, as a gift and a memoir of this event. Uh, the pen says on, on it, Thornton Academy. We hope that as you go to Washington, D.C., or Orono, Maine, or Annapolis, Maryland, or Northeastern Massachusetts, and all the other towns and cities that you will visit on those journeys when you're proudly wearing your new colors, we, don't, we hope that you don't forget the maroon and gold, which uh, form the, the basis of your roots. So we ask you this time to unsheath those pens, sign your letters, and begin the next phase of your journey. Congratulations. All right, now the ceremony's over, so we're joined now with Mia Claire Kiesel heading to Annapolis, Maryland. So first, let's talk about what is this day like? There's a ton of people here and, you know, celebrating this with also all the three of your classmates. What did that feel like? Uh, it was really special. Yeah, no, you can hold it. Yeah. It was a really special moment, especially I didn't expect so many people to show up, so that was really that was really awesome. But a little nerve wracking, but it was just so cool to be able to share this experience with three other classmates that I know have been working so hard to get to this point. So it's just it's just a great feeling. Military schools obviously have rigorous programs and rigorous uh, athletics. What was so special about Navy to you? Um, so, as I kind of previously mentioned, I really wanted to major in operations research and minor in Chinese, and Navy offered the best, but um, it also just like on the campus, I just, it just felt like home, like when I stepped, like, so Navy was my last official visit I did, and stepping onto like the campuses of West Point and Air Force, they were beautiful, and like I could see myself there, but when I stepped on Navy, it, like it felt like I was home, so it just, and then meeting with the coaching staff, and it was just, I don't know, I just, like, as kind of Cody Ruff said, like, it felt like home away from home. Now talk about the commitment, like, for people who don't know, understand, like, you know, not only the school itself, but then the years after. What is the kind of commitment have you made now to the United States military? So I will attend school there for four years, and then afterwards I have a five-year commitment to the military. So whether that's fighting on front lines or just kind of working behind scenes, whether it's, like, being a translator or uh, planning like food drop-offs for like pe people stationed. So it just really anything to kind of aid the military. Uh, what is What are the feelings in your last spring season here at TA for track? Um, it's a lot because it's just with like the running community, not only just having the team, but I also have like friends from all over the state that I've been competing against since I've been five. So it's just, it's a lot of emotions. Um, senior night, Rose 
kind of eluded that they weren't doing anything, and then they surprised us all in senior on our last home night home meet. So that was that was a lot of emotions. Um, crossing the finish line in the four by four on Wednesday night was kind of tough. I looked at Jazz and I'm like, I don't want to cross this finish line because I knew this was my final race at TA. But it's just it's so special that I'm having like a heart. it's so sad to leave because I've had such a big like people have left such a big impression on me these past four years and as we wrap up just talk about just the pride that you know we can talk to your family and friends about you know deciding to serve our country after school what what is what has that been like um I don't know <laughs> so no just just talk just you as you told your family and friends like I want to serve in the military you know that's obviously a huge step especially going to a, a service academy and you're basically making a nine-year commitment to be away from home and and going to harm's way even so what has been the reaction of your family and friends when you is it kind of like oh yeah I knew you were gonna do that or what was it like um, definitely my mom in the beginning was like are you sure you want to do this like how any mother would be like overprotected kind of but uh, now that she's seen that I'm like really serious about it she's all in she's all excited like it's not like she didn't want me to go but she's just like you do know like what you committing to I'm like yeah I like and she, so she's excited for me my dad was my dad's excited it's just it's just like all the support I've seen no one's been like oh no you can't do this like everybody's been so like you got this like kind of just being very supportive so it's just been a great feeling awesome well congratulations again best of luck to you Thank and what you. day what date do you have to leave now you don't have a normal summer like no. the rest of the seniors my induction day is June 30th so I'm leaving to go down on June 27th wow well congratulations Thank and best you. of luck we'll be following you along the way Thank you so thanks much. we'll be right back and we'll have Cody Bowker from the baseball team all right, our final interview for the day today will be with Cody Bowker of the baseball team heading to Georgetown University. Cody, so first let's talk about what was it about Georgetown that really sparked your interest and, and had you commit? You committed pretty early. Now, what was that, why was that such an easy decision for you? Um, just uh, the coach was really the decision for me. Um, he, he's kind of flipped some programs around. Like um, last year, in his first year, he, I mean, he literally won. It was, they were like six and like 35 or something, like terrible record. But this year... Um, they got a shot in the Big East tournament and uh, actually swept uh, number 16 UConn. So just kind of seeing the upward trend and um, just a school that um, kind of has some history, like basketball and, um, and some other sports being super good, but maybe not baseball kind of. Um, helping maybe bring baseball into that mix um, is kind of interesting to me. So. Awesome. so just talk about your career at TA. How has that helped you prepare for the next level? Um, so TA has just tested me so much. Like, uh, academically have been tested and then I've had um, the opportunities to play in a lot of like playoff situations um, even like in soccer I don't think we want a playoff game but just being in those games um, really helps but same basketball um, being able to play um, in the, the class A like final and some of those playoff games um, in front of big crowds um, and then the same thing in baseball we've had uh, the opportunity to kind of and you've said a lot of times, like, the, the, t the team's kind of choked a lot in the past and kind of we're looking to get I don't get know if he's choked, but underachieved. Under that, that's <laughs> yeah. that's this is I'm the like. year, though. I yeah, can yeah, feel yeah. it. Yeah. No, so, um, I mean, even just, like, last year, just kind of getting over the hump and kind of um, – those kind of opportunities have just made me a better player and a better person. So Now, your academic and athletic career here at Thorne Academy has been a little bit different because you're a private pay day student, which yeah. means, you know, you travel and you travel a long way and slept yeah. on some couches as well. Yeah. And what has that experience been like? I mean, obviously, you've enjoyed your time here, but for those out there maybe thinking about come to Thorne Academy, like why, why should they take that that uh, that choice? Um, just the, the amount that I got challenged and that just kind of pushed me again over that hump to become a better person. Um, I'm super thankful for, like, um, some dorm families set for helping me and then other families that have been able to stay with um, for like their hospitality but um, I would definitely make it a point to at least check out TA just the challenges and the, um, the opportunities that I, that I mentioned um, have definitely made me become a better person and a better player. What are some things in general about Georgetown that you're excited for uh, for going there and playing baseball? Um, Campus is nice, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's small. But I'm not used to the city, so I'm, I'm going to try to figure that stuff out. Um, but, again, just, just the opportunity. Um, and then the facilities are nice. My teammates are nice. The coaches are nice. So, um, And then being in the capital of a great country just kind of adds to it. So. Now, this is a special day with four of you all signing. What is it like, you know, you played some, some sports with some of these guys, um, but to share this moment with three others, I mean, some people would be like, oh, I want my own ceremony, but this is something special that we have four division athletes yeah, in definitely. one year. Um, it just shows what, what TA can produce and the, the opportunities that TA gives. Um, I know 
every single one of those people have been challenged and um, been put in situations and they've all um, thrived and been successful and that's why we're all at the point that we are now. Awesome. Uh, so last off, your career at ba your baseball career at TA is not over. So what are you hoping for for the rest of the season? I think we all know what we're hoping for. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say it, but um, uh, just the opportunity to compete. That's what I'm looking yeah. forward to. Um, we've done super well this season, and we look to just kind of keep keep on winning. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, and best of luck to you. We'll keep track yep. of you, and best of luck the rest of the season, of course. Yep. We'll take a quick break and wrap it up here from the atrium. All right, I want to thank all of our guests, and thank you for joining us today. Just one last thought here, Zach. Uh, we, we talked to Cody Bowker at the end there. What do you think the chances are? This is almost like a mini Trojan talk. Um, <laughs> talk about the you know the end-of-the-year baseball team uh, looking pretty strong uh, for, for the end of the year, especially with the pitching. Yeah, uh, T's got a great team this year. That, and they did have one loss, but, I mean, they've played some great games. They're winning by a lot, and they've got some really good pitchers. It's, it's a depth, too, not just Cody, but a lot of great pitchers, a lot of great uh, the hitters as well. they got a good team. I think that Cody talked about it well. You know, they've, they've gotten over that hump of, you know, losing early or struggling, and so uh, they're, they're looking for a state title. I think they're all driven, so it should be a good year, and I think they'll, they'll win a state championship. And we saw, uh, speaking about boys across, where Cody Ruff plays for, he's playing football in college, but he plays across right now. We saw an incredible game against Cape last week, a last second uh, game time goal and then overtime goal. What do you see from that team? You've seen him a couple times now. And, and Cody Ruff, again, the first year I think he's playing full, yeah. you know, full, full on yeah. in lacrosse, and he's just a force out there. What do you see for that team heading into the playoffs here just a few weeks? Well, of course, they get the win of the year over Cape Elizabeth with that game-winning goal by Ronan Flynn. Incredible game. And they're a battle-tested team, which is incredibly important when you go to the playoffs. And I think they can certainly go to a state championship. They've proven it. They've beaten Cape. Uh, their one loss to was to South Portland, which was certainly a little bit of, a little bit of a surprise. But um, there is a little less pressure going in the playoffs when you don't have the undefeated stamp on you. Uh, but this team has a great chance. I mean, their their attackers are incredible. They can score a lot of goals. They kept up with Cape Elizabeth and shut them down on defense too. Uh, Cape didn't have their best uh, day scoring goals, and so this team is good on both sides of the ball and I'm sure Coach Hersey is thrilled with how they're playing uh, here late in the season. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks guys for your help and that's going to do it here from the H room with the National Letterman 10 signing ceremony for our four athletes. Well, thank you for joining us. We have a live stream later today on uh, today's Tuesday. Uh, boy, girls lacrosse against Biddeford at 4 o'clock and we'll also have some live streams coming up this weekend as the end of the season comes quick. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you later.